So, all right, uh, participant. Next, uh, following the soil erosion, different causes and processes, we are now going to discuss about the factors which are associated with soil erosion. Now, if you see that there are few very important factors associated with soil erosion. One is climate. Second is soil characteristics. Third, landform or topography. And then last one is land cover. Now, if you look at that, each one of them has very important role to play to cause soil erosion. Now, in climate, the parameters which are very important to look at rainfall, temperature, wind. In case of soil characteristics, we need to look at grain size, shape, porosity, means you know the spaces between soil particle. Suppose if you have soil particle like this like this. Now, this is your porosity, this gap between two particle, this one is the pore space. Percentage of that pore space we call as porosity. Then stratification and permeability. Permeability means again if suppose rain is taking place, then how much of that rainfall water will actually percolate or go down downwards that we actually can measure through permeability. Land form and topography as you all understand, orientation of the land, elevation and angle, slope and slope length. So, these are few factors under land form of topography that we need to look at. Finally, land cover type of canopy, root structure, root structure of various plant species and ability to retard the flow, flow of water. So, when rainfall takes place, it actually hits the ground with certain amount of momentum. Now, then the water flows across the slope and that speed of water need to be somehow reduced to reduce the soil erosion by the running water. So, that is what is you know ability to retard the flow of water. So, these are the factors which basically you know impact soil erosion. Now, the processes which uh, you know largely involved for causing soil erosion. First, splash erosion. As from the name itself, you can understand that when a rainfall drops, it hits the ground with certain amount of momentum and that splash the soil from the surface due to the kinetic energy of the raindrops. So, that is one way of erosion. Soil erosion can take place. Second, sheet erosion. Sheet means you know paper like A4 paper, printing paper, paper that is also we call sheet. You know? So, that kind of a layer of soil will be removed by this erosion. So, continuation of splash erosion which leads to deposition of the soils in the form of a thin sheets with the overland flow. So, as you see in this picture, so the rainfall is taking place hitting the ground and then across the slope the soil is going move taken away from top to the below. So, when it comes get detached then a thin layer will be formed down there here at this level. So, that thin layer of soil when it is taken off from the top of the land surface we call it them seat erosion. Next real erosion. Now, this is again a continuous process of sheet erosion where it leads to a finger like real formation on the soil surface. So, this is the important point to be noted as you see here. So, this is a form of erosion which we call as real erosion. The next is gully erosion. So, when the real formation this is the small real as you see that in between soil. Okay. So, when this formation due to continuous process of erosion you know become bigger in size and ultimately leads to formation of gully as you see here. This structure we called gully. The soil gets departed from each other and this area becomes larger and larger. So, we call it as gully. So, gully is formed because of extensive erosion takes place. This erosion we call as gully erosion. Finally, we come to ravine erosion. The formation of these gullies, the formation of these gullies when continues, then they become a ravine 
erosion as you see so a much larger form of gully erosion so this is the way the soil erosion takes place under different impact of different factors now how actually we can measure this you know soil loss because of erosion taking place there is a universal soil loss equation which is famously known as usle equation universal soil loss equation where a equal to rk a less cp where a is the average soil loss for a given period r stands for rainfall erosivity index k soil erodibility factor l is the slope length factor s is your slope steepness factor c stands for crop management factor and finally p stands for conservation practice factor so these all factors are taken together here and we get universal soil loss equation so you actually try to measure the average soil loss which is a function of these factors as mentioned here so usle is a empirical model right and that is limited to sheet and real erosion and doesn't consider the deposition of soil all right so the revised usle which we call as r usle is the updated version of universal soil loss equation where we actually consider seasonally variable k factor and ls factor includes the multiple slope segment computation so that means with you know experience and different kind of you know calculation people or scientist has revised the universal soil loss equation into revised soil loss equation and here you you see that these factors are modified little bit so c was crop management factor here in the universal soil loss equation in revised soil loss equation c stands for surface roughness canopy cover etc and p here in universal soil loss equation we consider that as conservation practice factor whereas here p factor includes subsurface drainage as well contour effect strip cropping etc so continue with soil erosion another you know important agent a cause of soil erosion is wind strong wind it will result due to the high wind velocity and that would cause soil erosion a large proportion of top soil will be taken off from the land surface it generally occurs in the bare soil and wherever loose soils are available it will be taken off by the strong wind dry soil are mostly susceptible to wind erosion now the wind erosion also depends on the particle sizes so roughness of those particles so if these are loose particles are more there definitely the soil loss or erosion by wind will be much higher now sometime at the land surfaces we also carry out various cropping practices agricultural practices like tillage land preparation so all those things also might you know enhance or aggravate the soil erosion so what is the empirical formula for this kind of soil loss estimation so this is the formula that you know is being used where s stands for quantity of soil removed from a surface v stands for wind velocity v0 minimum threshold velocity to move the soil particles d particles diameter so from this equation also you can measure under strong wind how much soil will be taken off from the surface now let us come to the next important soil degradation or land degradation that is desertification after soil erosion desertification is another problem associated with land resources that require enough attention from the scientific as well as you know different management committees or managers of land so what actually desertification means desertification means that land degradation in arid means dry or semi arid or dry subunit areas resulting from various factors including your climatic variations or human activities now desertification you know sometime can be caused because of 
you know devegetations or deforestations because of some other livelihood activities which we discussed at the beginning that sometime because of deforestation also desertification will take place and if deforestation takes place desertification takes place there will be also depletion of ground water salinization will increase so everything is somehow is related to each other now desertification if you look at it affects over almost 40% of world land area with Africa being the most affected continent with almost 73% affected significant you know losses are taking place because of desertification so desertification three categories we can divide moderate desertification then severe desertification and very severe desertification so these are the three classes or categories of desertification it is estimated you know that that in the last 50 years of different anthropogenic activities the land degradation you know has taken place almost in the land area of brazil so you can imagine one brazil entire brazil country whatever land mass it has so in the last 50 years of activities has been responsible of the size of brazil's land area has somehow got desertified so this is a significant impact on human civilization so desertification must be taken care of now before we go into the management of this you know big problem that land resources often face we need to know the causes of desertification what are the main causes deforestation overgrazing mining and quarrying excessive use of fertilizers unregulated waste disposal now these are few important you know causes of desertification now what happened is that desertification leads to increased drought and water stress it would of course lead to deforestation loss of biodiversity instability and crisis different kind of social you know dynamics is also going to be impacted because of desertification a large proportion of people in various parts of the world depends on forest resources as i mentioned in beginning that among the natural resources land forest water these are very very critical for human you know sustainable survival now increased emissions of greenhouse gases could also be enhanced because of of desertification migration can takes place because if certain area where people are you know living if that area for some reason becomes desertified or land degradation takes place so naturally people are not going to able that land for food production or for any other you know purposes so they need to look for better land so migration can also takes place food security and hunger will be another outcome and extreme poverty so these are all you know very very dangerous outcomes that could actually come out of uh, desertification